Thank you very much for this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to share just a few thoughts. I'll be brief. It's been a long day for most of you. Uh, it's a special honor for me that uh, I'm getting a chance to compliment the chemistry teachers. When Sujit Patel came with this proposal, Mr. Mukundan and I reviewed it. And somehow, I don't mind admitting, it looked like chalta hai idea. But Sujit was so passionate that it could have been criminal and inhuman to tell him he can't try it. Because then we would be doing what many of us do to kill creativity. So I would like, uh, if you don't mind my being slightly parochial, to first compliment Sujit. And I would encourage every employee in Tata Chemicals to do the opposite of what the Vice Chairman tells you to do. Sujit has established that as a good tradition. I would uh, also add my thanks to the Association of Chemistry Teachers, to our very distinguished panel of uh, jury who have assisted in this and encouraged. And as Mr. Mukundan said, this is only a start and there's more to come. Uh, I would like to keep my comments um, to refer to two statements made during the panel discussion. First of all, I have to make a confession. As I sat and listened to this proceedings this evening, a vague, hazy image of 1962 St. Xavier's College, Calcutta came back into my mind. We had a teacher of organic chemistry called Professor Hiten Mukherjee. I was born and raised in Calcutta, so there's a bit of bong in me, you know. And he used to teach organic chemistry with the same lyricism as Rabindra Shangeet. <laughs> and he used to go, oh, 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 and there is a sort of, uh, in his rather sonorous voice, he made the subject so complicated that we would periodically doze off. And he was so annoyed that he put his hand up and waved his finger. I thought he was looking in my direction, but all the 45 students in the class thought exactly the same. And he said, one day all of you will regret not paying attention in organic chemistry class. And that day seems to have arrived today. <laughs> um, when I heard uh, Professor Anil Kumar say that uh, you don't have to have big laboratories, uh, burets and pipettes, and you just have to join a soap company, I was delighted because that's exactly what I did. <laughs> After I got reprimanded for not paying attention in organic chemistry class, I went and joined Hindustan Leva and I've been seeing rainbows ever since then <laughs> and for only two rupees, so it's been very good. I was also very interested to hear Dr. Arup Basu talk about something he said which was very true and relevant and it touched a chord. You go to the first standard and ask them, everybody says they can sing and you go to the tenth standard and they can't because recently I went and I was in, a, I'm associated with the school and I asked all the boys in the class in third standard or thereabouts, how many of you play cricket and everybody put up his hand. And then I met the Indian cricket team and I asked how many of you can play good cricket, nobody put up his hand. <laughs> so it does seem that something in the process of striving for excellence kills that very act of excellence. Uh, the chemical industry is a, is a fantastic industry which doesn't know it's fantastic. It's a $4 trillion industry. It's four times the size of the automotive industry. It's five times the size of the steel industry. If you add the automotive and the steel industry put together, the chemical industry is still bigger. Mind you, this all depends on how you define automotive, and steel and chemicals. Uh, but it has one unique characteristic which no other industry has. 80% of the output of the chemical industry is B2B business one company selling to another company. The consumer never hears about it. And so only 20% is consumer facing. Paints, drugs, even medicines you know, really come on the doctor's prescription, frankly. But soap, detergents, cosmetics, uh, paints and those kinds of products. And because of this, it's a fugitive industry. Nobody recognizes chemicals. I would like to believe uh, that most of us, if you ask a person, uh, what work do you do? He says, I work at a software company. That sounds very intelligent. And he's writing some Java code. Somebody says, I work in the automotive industry. He, says, ah, he makes motor cars of some kind. 
But when you ask a guy, what do you do? He says, I work in the chemical industry. You are forced to ask the next question, what do you actually do? And if he says, I make amines and uh, uh, polyols, then really his mother and grandmother don't understand what he actually does for a living. And this is one of the difficulties in the chemical industry. It doesn't make it a bad industry. We should recall that what the software industry has in image today, the chemical industry has had over the last hundred years. It was the most creative, it is the most fantastic industry. It has made human progress so unexceptionally distinguished. Probably no other science, basic science can make that claim. I say probably because this is an arguable point. The chemical industry is the one that opened, or chemistry, opened the doors of other forms of uh, science application. Back in the 1860s, 1870s, the first guy who found carbolic acid can do an antiseptic job or that you can use a gas to make uh, anesthesia led to the whole field of surgery. Until then, surgery meant picking up a knife and just hacking through a human body. Surgery, the whole field of medicine was advanced thanks to these two things, antiseptic and uh, anesthetics. Uh, anesthetics. The, if Mr. Haber Bosch had not invented the ammonia synthesis process in 1909, there would be no fertilizer. If there was no fertilizer, there would be no food. Mankind would not have been able to feed itself. We would not be 7 billion today. We would probably be 3 billion because a lot of people would have died of starvation as it used to happen hundreds of years ago. One could even argue, and it could be challenged, but it's an argument that could be made, that the greatest contribution to mankind in the last century has been the Haber-Bosch process. That one single process has allowed mankind. But I think pharmaceutical industry and many other industries can make these sorts of claims, but they'll have the mother science uh, behind them as chemistry. So I'm very glad that we are honoring this. We have discussed a little bit in the panel about uh, the state of chemistry teaching and we have assembled here today some people from the industry, some people from the teaching profession and some people who are senior academics. And we can all complain that the government should do this, how the university system prevents you from updating your syllabus, how the deemed university system allows you to do something else. But I think I would like to, in closing my remarks today, make two or three specific suggestions which the people sitting in this room can do. And I'm going to make the suggestions and leave it to the wisdom of Mr. Mukundan and his colleagues in the company and to the senior leaders of uh, the Association of Chemistry Teachers and the other academic people who are here. I want to make two or three suggestions which can take this journey further. And they are merely suggestions. If you can try to consider it, it will be helpful. The first is uh, Tata's have a program, another part of Tata's, not Tata Chemicals, called the Building India Essay Competition. We started that five years ago and we have access to three million school children per year. I had forgotten how many schools there are, thousands of them. So a delivery vehicle, a contact vehicle exists. And I wonder whether we could consider riding on the back of that to reach something to do with creating excitement in chemistry. I don't want to suggest that it is uh, got to be a chemistry exam or something like that, but you could discuss with the Chemistry Teachers Association. Three million school kids is a small drop in the ocean of the number of people who go to school in this country. But they are the three million schools, uh, it, it's a start somewhere. These kids are fantastic. In, incidentally, Tata's run the country's largest essay competition. It's run not just in one language, but in seven languages. And the finalists are taken to Rashtrapati Bhavan to have a cup of tea with the president. Now, whatever your opinion of the president may be, that's a big day if you're a kid to go to Rashtrapati Bhavan and to have tea with the president as a photograph. So that's one vehicle that you can use if you can think of an imaginative way to build in chemistry into that, and I would recommend it. The second is, I was very struck by Professor Saurav Pal's uh, comments on the role of the teacher. And uh, since there were some ideas mentioned here, and there are definitely even more ideas, I wonder whether Tata Chemicals, along with partnership with CII and the 
fora and the network that you've already created can actually produce a document or a paper on how to make chemistry teaching more interesting and effective. Uh, maybe there are hundreds of reports on this, but you can use the commercial muscle of CII and Tata Chemicals to probably bring this into higher visibility. It's not that in India in many problems we lack ideas, but we lack the vehicles to advance the ideas and it's from that perspective that I'm suggesting. Very much like an excellent report produced, again Mukundan has led this in CII on uh, how to develop the chemical industry in India. I'm taking the educational equivalent of that. And the third one is, we are human beings, we respond to emotion, we respond to heart. Everything is not a matter of the mind. You got to make people love chemistry rather than respect chemistry only. And to make people love chemistry, you must romanticize chemistry. And I just wonder whether Tata Chemicals or a group of companies can to get together and sponsor an imaginative writer to write about the romance of chemistry, the story of chemistry, what it has done. Because chemistry and chemical industry have a problem, they have a bad image. The moment you say my son works in the chemical industry, people think of ammonia leaking and something or the other happening which kills people. And I think the model I have in my mind is Professor Siddhartha Mukherjee who has written this book called The Emperor of Maladies. It's about the scourge of cancer. But if you read his book, it is lyrical. Only a Bengali can produce that kind of book in English, you know. <laughs> it is absolutely lyrical and it covers a lot of this uh, romance of chemistry because that is a basic science for pharmacology and uh, uh, surgery. So I would like to leave these three suggestions. I applaud the initiative taken by uh, Tata Chemicals, CII, the Association of Chemical Teachers and all the other people who have contributed to it. I am delighted to know from Mukundan that this will go forward and gather strength. I have made my humble suggestions on two or three ways to take it forward. Congratulations to all of you and thank you for allowing me to say a few words.